Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com and this is part 9 of our Selenium Automation with C Sharp video series. And in this part, we are going to talk about page navigations in page object model using Selenium with C Sharp. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 8 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. As well as the most important thing is to understand the page navigation concept even more detail. I would request you to watch page object model in Selenium of part 6 from Selenium Framework Design and Development playlist of Exude Automation channel. So we have already discussed about page navigation in greater detail in part 6 of Selenium Framework Design and Development video series playlist of this Exude Automation channel. If you have already watched that video of the video series then you will have a greater understanding of this discussion which we are going to make here. So I am not going to do a repeated talk here since that video has covered almost all the important nitty gritty details of page navigations. So here we are going to write page navigations directly in our Selenium C Sharp and we are going to work from there. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we worked in part 8 of this video series. So here we have already created a class called EA page object where it deals with our websites EA page this one right so we type to perform an initial data entry and we also performed a click operation but we didn't did much of the operation in last video of this video series but today what we're going to do is we're going to do two operations so first we're going to do a login operation so once I perform a login it goes to the second page which is nothing but the user form page right and we call it as EA page object model. So let's call this as EA page. So once our login operation is done, it lands to a EA page of our website, right? So we should explicitly tell in our code that once you perform a login operation, then return the page object of this EA page, right? So that is the real concept of page navigation in page object model. So if you specify the page which you are going to land in the code itself then that way you can make sure that this operation will lead to that particular page. So that's what we are going to do in this video of this video series. So in order for that to be done I am going to write some code by creating a separate class file for our login page. So since login page is altogether a different page right so I need to write a separate class file for that. So I'm going to add a class and let's call this as login page object. Right? So I need to add the objects for this particular class file. So I have already written some of the codes for this since it's just three objects. So I've just already written that right for saving some time. So let's add some reference for the missing references error which is showing up here. Okay, great. And we also need to initialize this particular page using the constructor. So page factory dot init elements of property collection dot driver and this. Great. So we have initialized the page right here. So if you have already seen part 8 of this video series you will know what this property collection dot driver is and how this initialization is done right great I've saved this code and the next thing is let's go to the program.cs so what we did is we just typed the initial and we clicked the button save operation in the EA page so once you hit the login you will get this EA page and you typed the initial and also click the save button so let's do some more operation here. Let's type some first name, middle name also, right? So let me inspect the element and let's see what is its name. Okay, its first name. So let me add some code in there as well. So all right, and it's txt first name. Great. And then what is the other value? Is middle name great so I'm gonna put the middle name there and it's txt middle name great let's save this and 
that's fine for this guy so in the page object model the real concept is we try to write all the operation nitty-gritty operation as a simple methods as well so you don't have to keep on writing the code in your program.cs like this like initializing a page and similarly for login operation you write the login code right here straight away rather you can write it as a method the actions that you're going to perform write as a method within the page object class itself so if it doesn't make sense let me write the code first and let you understand what I'm talking about so for login operation anyhow you know for login operation of this particular page you're going to enter the username and password and you're going to hit the login button right that is the only operation you're going to make for this login page so why don't you write as a method as a keyword and then call the login to your program.cs just the method and just pass the value as a parameter that's it so you don't have to keep on writing a lot of codes in here right just initialize the page object of the class file and then call just the method just the method which perform the operation that's it don't call each and every object like the properties you have initialized right here and then perform the operation since that doesn't make sense because if you write the same method in your page object class itself that make greater level of abstraction than the one which you write the code in the program.cs itself right so to make the code real sense, I'm going to first write just a code so that you can understand what I'm really talking about. So public void, let's call this as login. And then I'm going to pass two stuff. So one is username and the another one is the password. Right. And then it's going to perform two operations as I said. So one is the login. So it's txt username. Oops, I'm sorry. txt username dot send keys of the one which we pass it as a parameter so username and then password right so txt password dot send keys of password right and then the next operation you're going to do is you're going to click the button right that's going to be btn login dot click that's it. Or you can also use btnglobbing.submit that will perform the click operation as well. So this will perform the login operation of your page. But now wait. I told that the page navigation is going to be writing a code where if I click the login button, I should tell in the code itself that we have navigated to the EA page. But where are we specifying that in this code? do we see anything like that of course not so in order for that to be done instead of void type I'm going to return the page object directly which means I'm going to return the EA page object once I click the submit button or the login button so return the page object just nothing but new return new of EA page object right so if I return this way this is going to initialize all my page objects of this particular EA page object at the same time it is going to return me the instance of the EA page from the login itself so we can do the rest of operation from there so let me write the program.cs file and it will make you even more sense so for this guy what I'm going to do is I'm going to first log in to application right so what I'm going to do is let me create the instance for the login page object login or page login is equal to new this guy so this will initialize all the object within the page login and then page login dot login do you see that so if I do a login operation let's say I'm going to pass the usernames as execute and the password as automation right so this method will return me the EA page object type right so instead of this way you are creating the initialization of page object you can directly write the code like this 
So EA page object and here let's call it as page EA right so this guy will then perform the rest of our operation right but again wait why do we write this kind of code here so you're going to just type or fill the form right here in this particular user form so why don't we write as a method in the EA page object class file so let's go to definition and here let's write a method once again so public wide so of course once we hit the save button it's going to be in the same page so there is no point of returning some page object there so it's going to be wide type so public wide fill user form right and then we can pass string what are this initial first name middle name so string initial string oops middle name string last name all right so here i can directly pass txt initial dot send keys oops of what happened initial and then txt first name dot send keys of huh what's this first name and middle name oops see oh my god so here is going to be first name and then txt middle name dot send keys of middle name great right and then we're going to perform the click operation so for that btn dot click that should be good great so fill user form method will perform our operations which we are expecting so let's go to program.cs so instead of doing this way i can write this code even more cleaner by just typing page ea dot fill user form right and then you can pass the values in here like this so initial is going to be kk and the middle name is going to be karthik and the first name is going to be or let's say automation great that's it so you have just written the whole lot of codes in just two lines of code while you perform an operation right here rather the whole complex logics of this guy will sit in that particular page object so the initialization of the objects and the operations that you're going to perform in those objects is going to sit in the particular page object dot cs so if there is any change happens in your application or if there is any change in the whole scenario you just go back and change the particular method that's it you don't have to worry about how the program is calling those methods right so that's that's the greater advantage of page navigation in page object model of selenium so now let me run this code and see how really things works so for that i'm going to the test explorer all right and let's run and see the test whether it really works or not all right it opened the browser Oh, I'm so sorry for that. I think I changed. I've not changed the URL. So where is the URL? Let's go to the program.cs. I actually have to type the URL correctly. So this is the URL of the login page. So it's going to fail, right? So let's type the correct value here. All right, let's save this. And now let's run this test and see how things works. All right, it's on the login page right now. Hmm, slide is very slow. All right, it typed the value, and did you see that? It typed all the value, and the rest got passed. That's it. So that's the real power of page navigation and writing all the logics as a method in page object model of Selenium. Right. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video.
And in the next video, we're going to customize this whole code. So whatever code we have written as send keys, we have already written everything as a custom library in the selenium get method and selenium set method. So we're going to use those methods in the next video of this video series. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.